Welcome to BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Moppin. And I'm Brett Newcomb. And today we're going to talk about testosterone and men. Because we've been talking well, a lot about yeah, women. I think and they need some You're writing a book time. about testosterone and women. But yeah. to, we're going to talk about testosterone and men today. And one of the things we're going to talk about later in the show is erectile dysfunction. But I promise we won't throw any footballs through swinging tires. No uh, bathtubs. No bathtubs on the, <laughs> on the side of a hill. But, in parallel. In parallel. None yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. We're going to talk about the science that's yeah. involved in that. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about testosterone in men, uh, both men and women make testosterone. Men are believed to have these benefits, or the science shows they have these benefits from having an adequate amount of testosterone. Bone density, mm -hmm. and, and so the whole osteoporosis issue comes into play if you don't have good... Uh, men have great bones because they have, more they have 10 times as much testosterone as we do in their youth. Right. So their bones start out stronger. So the older guys that you see that are bent over mm -hmm. like this and can't, is that a... That's osteoporosis. They've, yeah. they've lost their testosterone years before that. Right. That takes a long time to develop. But they lost their, their testosterone and their bone mass. And if you replace the testosterone, will that help them straighten up? Once, well, once they've reached the point of having destroyed their bones enough right. that they have, they have the uh, kyphosis, then you can't really fix that, but if you just start to see them lean, mm -hmm. th you can stop it there by replacing the testosterone. Okay. So if you feel like you're losing a little bit of your balance, you're leaning over a little bit and you mm -hmm. can't stand up, it's because all of the vertebrae are kind of cr crushing. They're kind of, they're all piling up on each other at different angles. Right. And they're getting too close to one another. So you lose that nice little S in your back and you just get this big C. You lose that lower, uh, that lower curve, and then the upper curve gets real big, and the, you get a hump on your back. Yes. And not an unequal hump. That's usually scoliosis, but just hump? A, a what hump? hump? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love young Frankenstein too. <laughs> so you, you just get this big C, and that's that is once that has occurred. Mm -hmm. It, you can stop the progress, but you can't really recover the normal spinal alignment. So, so another element that they say testosterone in men has to do with fat distribution. Mm -hmm. And my son is a, an emergency room nurse, and he talks about uh, being able to look at people and say uh, type 2 diabetes because of where their fat mm -hmm. is located. Are those connected yes, at all? Yes, they are. Um, when, you, when you lose testosterone, when both men and women lose their testosterone, they start making more estrogen, which makes more fat. Mm -hmm. And then once you start making belly fat, which is where it goes, okay. belly fat makes more estrogen. So the guys that have skinny so hips and legs and skinny yeah, shoulders, but basketball belly, bellies. Th then you just make more and more estrogen, more and more fat, and then okay. your, your body fat outstrips your ability to make insulin. You become insulin resistant, so you're, you're also resistant. The cells don't let the insulin in. So as a physician. So you become diabetic. So as a physician, you walk around in the grocery store oh, yeah. or, or Target or someplace and you're just going check, check, Now you're going to make pe people paranoid when I'm in the grocery store. But no, I sit at dinner and I look yeah. across and I go, okay, there's a goiter. Should I have to go tell her? <laughs> yeah. Somebody who has a big a big thyroid, right. you know, that needs to be treated. Right. You know, I can I can see it. So you, do you like drop a little cards on the table? I could help you with your testosterone no, I don't. issue. I'm not that I'm not <laughs> rude enough to do that, but it makes a good story. Yeah. But <laughs> but I can see it. when I'm at the gym working out, I can look around and I can tell the men who are going to have a heart attack. Yeah. Because they have no blood flow to their face at all. Right. They have lots of body fat. They have very little muscle. They've lost their testosterone years ago. And they are going. They're set up for a heart attack, and that's what uh, the studies that we well, let's talk about we that. looked I mean, at set, <clears throat> says. I mean, it documents it. There's there have been many studies on men, and I only brought uh, a few to the table today. But in the last five to six years, testosterone's been a huge subject for studying males and the benefits of testosterone replacement in aging men. Mm -hmm. Now, women, we have to look for the research a little harder, but it's there. But men, men's research is is abundant in the endocrine okay. so, so world. So you're, you're referencing something called the SRM Journal in May of 2009. Mm -hmm. What is the SRM? It's the um, sexual medicine, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. So, so actually it looks at hormones mostly and mostly sexual hormones. Okay. And then it looks at, it looks at that study. This, this study says the, the, the study? risk for cardiovascular disease in men, uh, 1.6 times normal. 
in men with slight erectile dysfunction. Right. And 2.6 with severe erectile dysfunction. So if you have erectile dysfunction, in addition to all of the concerns and frustrations about your sex life mm -hmm. and, and performance anxiety and those things mm -hmm. that come up, you also ought to have warning lights go off that say you are at risk for cardiovascular stroke. And nobody, nobody really talks about that. They just hand you Viagra and say, see ya. Yeah. I mean, they really should say, well, one of the reasons, there's several different reasons that's true, okay? Testosterone usually helps both erectile dysfunction and helps people prevent cardiovascular disease. Well, they say see ya unless you have a four-hour erection. If you have that, call us. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. Well, I, you know, I don't know because I, I see the ads and they say, okay, go take this and you said, here's the Viagra, go away. Uh -huh. But they say, if you have the four-hour erection, come back. Is that relevant to the same conversation? Or no. is that a different issue? That's a whole different issue. Okay. That's, that's somebody who's not tolerating the Viagra or it's too much for them or they really didn't need it in the beginning. Be so it's causing the, blood flow to stay in their pelvis too long. That's not really good for you. Okay. Because this study is talking about the uh, metabolization of nitric acid. Right. And, and, and that's and, not the same thing. Well, Viagra increases n nitric acid. And so that causes vasodilation, dilation in the okay. pelvis that brings blood flow to the pelvis and causes an erection. So testosterone improves nitric acid, Viagra improves it for a period of time, mm -hmm. okay? So both thing, both answers to this problem are nitric acid is the basic, is the basic uh, chemical that you need to have an erection, mm -hmm. but testosterone gives you more nitric acid all the time. It also decreases cholesterol and triglycerides. It decreases inflammation, so it decreases heart disease. So that's why taking Viagra just helps you with ED. Yeah, you don't just want to treat the erection issue. Right. I, I remember working with a couple. The man was in his 80s. The woman was in her 70s. And he was really obsessed with still being able to function sexually and he couldn't get an erection and mm -hmm. they had tried pumps they had tried shots then they discovered these pills viagra mm -hmm. or some other derivative and there was improvement there mm -hmm. but they weren't talking about uh, the risk of heart attack and stroke in someone his age with the other issues that he had well, i mean he had a just tunnel vision right focus on because an erection. he had a different interest than the doctor should have yes he had an interest in function and the doctor should say oh, that's, that's a symptom of increased risk for cardiac disease. And I should work you that. up for that, or yes. I should send you to the doctor to work you up for it. So first, first and foremost, you need to look at it as a sign of a problem mm -hmm. and use that sign. A doctor should use that sign to say, hey, I, 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 want, you to be, I want you to be checked for heart yeah. disease. So there's another component of this. When it's not just the nitric acid, it's also compromise of the uh, of the vasculature of the pelvis, when all of your vessels will have atherosclerosis in the same way. In other words, if your vessels are narrowing on your heart mm -hmm. because you have fat layers of cholesterol mm -hmm. on the inside of your vessels, and it makes a vessel get very small and and makes you have high blood pressure, and then it makes it harder to pump blood through the vessels. I saw a surgery one time where Michael DeBakey pulled out a whole like six inch sheath of, of goo. goo from somebody's heart vessel and then it just started spurting all the way across the room. <laughs> I mean before that it was like trickle trickle. Yeah, it, yeah, it was get all through. fogged up. But you're saying that it's not just your heart no, that has whole, those issues. No, it's your whole body. If your heart has it, your carotids have it, so you're mm -hmm. at risk for stroke. Your pelvis has it, so you're going to have ED if you're male. So it's one of those things that we should go from ED back the other way. And is that a cholesterol issue? Well, it's cholesterol and inflammation. Mm -hmm. So if you, one of the reasons we don't get this when we're younger is not just wear and tear, it's that men have great testosterone levels so they aren't inflamed. They don't have inflammation in their body because right. testosterone decreases that. So inflammation is necessary. Let's go back to like why we get heart disease. You have to have inflammation, you have to have cholesterol and lipids uh, like triglycerides. So if you have those two things, then the cholesterol sticks to the vessel. If you don't have inflammation, then 
the cholesterol is just going to bypass the vessel and not stick. I love that you know this stuff. You know, th this is what we're talking about. When you go to see a good doctor, <laughs> you go in with a symptom and you say, I have this thing that won't heal. And they look at that thing that won't heal, but then they also factor in all the other stuff that you they know. You have to. That's, that's, you know. You, you start, I don't know if it's ADD or just breadth of knowledge, but you start talking about apples and all of a sudden we have a fruit basket here on the table because yeah. you go to, to testosterone, to cardiovascular disorder, to erectile dysfunction, to atherosclerosis which is is just build up of cholesterol on your vessels causing heart disease yeah but a good conversation with your doctor that explores all of these situations and all these issues that you may have gets a much better global look at your your overall quality of health mm -hmm. and so you don't just treat the symptom you treat the patient that's absolutely correct and that's what we've been trying to get through to in all in all of these podcasts and and YouTube uh, videos is that we're trying to educate you so maybe you don't have to ask your doctor so many things, but you can ask them the most important thing to you, like, I have ED, Would I do I have heart disease? Should I be checked for that? Right. And and that's, that's a big deal. It's even worse in young men. When men under 50, listen to the numbers, you aren't going to believe this. Okay. Men um, under 50 have ED. They have a 50-fold increase in the risk that they're going to have a heart attack in the next 10 years. So 50. If, Five yes, 50 wow. times the wow. risk of a normal uh, of another person the same age that doesn't have ED. Yeah. So that's huge. So when ED happens before age 50, then you're you can actually count on having having some kind of heart disease early. And it's another issue with men. Don't hide from it. Don't ignore it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Talk to your spouse about it. Talk to your doctor about it. If you're having issues with this, it's not just a performance anxiety, it's not just tiredness, it's not just stress. It's a major warning factor that something is potentially wrong or actually wrong with your body. Mm -hmm. And you need to talk to your doctor about it. These are I mean, we always tell people and men to are look for signs of that. things, yeah. like signs of uh, osteoporosis, you know, the fact that if you break a bone when you're just doing something minimal, that's mm -hmm. a sign of osteoporosis. You should be checked even if you're young or um, if you are starting to have this when mm -hmm. you're young, then you should have your check for osteoporosis as well. Yeah. But this is another thing. If you start having ED, you should have all the vascular things checked. And this study showed all of these results. Mm -hmm. And this should be on the front page of the paper. But this kind of stuff never is because nobody's well, pushing it. It should, be, it should be out there with testosterone prevents women from going through 25 symptoms of aging between 40 and 50. That should be on the front page. So should this. Well, you, you had quoted here from Endocrine Today uh, in 2008, mm -hmm. testosterone insufficiency linked to increased mortality in older men. Yep. Men with low testosterone had 1.5 times the risk of normal testosteroneized males at the same age of dying of heart disease, 1.34 times the risk of dying of cancer, and 2.39 times the risk of dying with respiratory disease. So you have heart disease, cancer, and respiratory failure that increase dramatically. The death rate, and all it takes is having a normal testosterone to, to prevent, to prevent it. That's I mean, and, and you can stop the process. I have men come in who have had all of these things, and the process stops. I look at the cardiac CRP, which is a, a lab test to look for inflammation in the body, and most men who have ED have a high CRP, and the CRP means lots of inflammation, which means heart disease right. and a lot of other things. So when we give them testosterone in a pure form, in the pellet form, then over time I watch their CRP come down to normal right? because it's an anti-inflammatory. So good medical care is about quality decisions, but it's also about quality of life. I mean, you yeah. know, we, we, you can do all the right interventions, mm -hmm. but if I don't eat right, exercise, if I smoke and drink too much, if I don't take care of myself, if I'm gambling with fate by my own choices, you're not going to be able to help me because no, I'm I mean, sabotaging that's myself. Thing. That's the first thing you should so fix. So those are factors, and you have to be aware of that. You have to make better choices. But just some simple things, and in particular, the replacement of testosterone or the maintenance of testosterone mm -hmm. in, in younger men can help avoid all of these life-ending disorders in men. And quality of life-ending disorders. I mean, you can avoid getting yeah, ED. Yeah, if you can't you can breathe, avoid, it's pretty scary. Yeah, you can't, yeah, and if, you're, if you have heart failure because you had a heart attack, it damaged your muscle, mm -hmm. then you've, I mean, that's life 
impairing. Yes. You, you've become a cardiac cripple. Yes. So you don't want to have a heart attack. I mean, it's not just a given you're going to have one. Right. I think when, when I was trained in medicine, the only thing we looked at was a disease comes in, a patient with a disease comes in, you take care of that disease and send them back out. Mm -hmm. I think, I hope, they're starting to look globally more at how do we tie this disease with this disease and this disease and find out what caused it. Yes. Because if we can find out what caused it, we can do very efficient medicine. One answer to five different diseases. Right. And that's what I'm trying to do by replacing hormones early on and not letting people get sick. To avoid the dominoes falling. Right, because testosterone also in men keeps them from losing their balance as they get older. Mm -hmm. Walkers, all that junk that right. we don't want, keeps right. them independent, keeps them their eyes good, keeps their hearing good, keeps them driving. I mean, it, it is kind of the fountain of youth, but I hate to, to bill it that way. But if you look at all these articles, right. one article says it's going to prevent you from heart disease. It's going to prevent heart disease. Another diabetes, another stroke, another osteoporosis, all the things that impair our lives as we get older. So why not take care of all those before they all happen? Well, and the point that you make in one of the chapters in the book is that we have all these medical specialties who are like the, the, the six blind men trying to describe the elephant. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah. and each one of them is focused on their subset of special skills. Mm -hmm. And very few people are standing back and looking globally at the whole operation of, of the individual in the mm -hmm. system. And if they do, your argument is one of the things that they'll see is hormone replacement therapy for women after they begin uh, at 40s. 40 and start their mm -hmm. menopause and, and men around 50. Uh, hormone replacement therapy operates. And hormones include, we're talking about it includes testosterone. The world talks about it as estrogen. So we're yes. talking about hormone replacement therapy as it could be estrogen or testosterone or progesterone. Or progesterone. Right. So, so that's what we're talking about when we say hormone replacement therapy. Yeah. But, but hugely preventative, greatly increasing quality of life and quality of experience. It's not just about sex. It's not just about muscle mass. It's about living longer, living better, still with the responsibility to make good lifestyle choices for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you are curious about any of this and want further information, you can get in touch with us directly at biobalancehealth.com or you can email us at podcast at biobalancehealth.com or call my office at 314-993-0963. And you can always reach me at brettnewcomb.com.